the test examples you might see for target 11. So this page would have our basic type questions on it. On adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. So this page is the basic. So all we're doing when we add polynomials, we're taking this trinomial plus this trinomial. And we're just adding the like terms. So we have 6k to the fifth and 9k to the fifth. Those are like terms because they both have the same variable with the same exponent, k to the fifth power. So we just add the coefficients. 16 and 9 make 24. 6 and 9 make 15. Negative 5k to the fourth is the only k to the fourth term. So we're going to have a minus 5k to the fourth. You could also write that as plus a negative 5k to the fourth. Then we're going to have any no k cubes. I suppose if you wanted, you could put plus 0k cubed and 0k squared. Then we're going to have our negative 3k. And again, you could write minus 3k or plus negative 3k. And then lastly, we're going to combine the constants. And don't forget to include the negative with that 4. So it's 7 and negative 4, which is a positive 3. And don't forget, all of your terms then in the end should have plus or minus signs between them. Number three, we're doing subtraction. My advice is to change subtraction to adding the opposite. Change that minus sign to plus the negative. That's the definition of subtraction. And then I would recommend distributing that negative to everything that's in that polynomial you're subtracting. So when you distribute a negative, it just changes the sign of everything. So we'd have 8v, a negative 5, and a negative 2v squared that we're adding to our first term, 3v squared plus 7v, or to our first polynomial. So now it's just like the other problem. I look for my highest degree term, that's the v squared. So I have 3v squared and negative 2v squared, so that gives me 1v squared. Make sure that looks like a v. And then I have my v terms. So I have 8v and 7v, so that combined to 15v. And notice I put a plus sign between those. And then any other terms, there are only the minus 5 for the constant terms. So for subtraction, distribute that subtraction to everything that's in that polynomial in those parentheses. The third one is just basically dealing with what are like terms when we have multiple variables and we have multiple polynomials. We have three of them. We have a binomial, a trinomial, and another binomial. So... I'm just going to add all of these. So are there any other c to the fourth d terms? Well, there's another one. So if I combine those, I would get negative 6 of them plus 3 of them is negative 3. c to the fourth d. And then I see I have some c times d terms. Remember, this is negative 1 of them. So I have 3 and 7, which is 10, minus 1 is 9. So I'm going to have 9c times d. I put a plus sign between them. The other thing, by circling them, I kind of see what's left. The only thing that's left is my constant terms. My 10 and my 9 combine to 11. And again, you need to put the plus sign there. All the terms need to be separated by addition or subtraction. So the final answer is negative 3c to the fourth d plus 9cd plus 11. And then the last basic one is multiplying. And in this case, we have a binomial, which is two terms, and a trinomial, which is three terms. So what I like to do is I like to use a box to visualize this. I need a two by three box. The two for the two terms, the x and the negative one, and don't forget to put that negative with the 1, and then the 3 terms for the x squared, the negative 2x, and the 1. So when you complete this table, what that's helping you do is just distribute. 
So the whole first row is just showing how to distribute the x. x times x squared is x cubed. Remember that's x to the first, so we add the exponents. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times 1 is 1x. And then we distribute the negative 1. So a common mistake is people forget to distribute the negative there. So we'd have negative 1x squared. We'd have a positive 2x, because that's negative 1 times negative 2x. And we'd have a negative 1. So then lastly, I just put all these together by combining the like terms. So I have an x cubed. These are like terms. I have negative 3x squared. So when I add those, I add the coefficients, but I keep the term, the x squared. So negative 2x squared plus negative 1 is a negative 3x squared. And again, you could write that as minus 3x or plus a negative 3x squared. Minus 3x squared or plus a negative 3x squared. Those are going to combine to 3x, and then we have our minus 1. So those are the basic operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying. So now, at the little tougher level, the meets level, we introduce exponents. Remember, this exponent of 3 cannot be distributed. You can't distribute an exponent across addition or subtraction like that. So you have to think of this as x minus 2y times itself three times. So now to multiply three polynomials, just pick two and multiply them. I'm going to multiply these first two. You could certainly use a box. I'm just going to use the distributive property twice, but you can certainly do that. Or you could use FOIL, first, oops, this is first, outer, inner, last, whichever way you want to do that. So the first would give me x times x, the outer would give me x times negative 2y, the inner would give me a negative 2y times x, and the last, negative 2y times negative 2y would give me a 4y squared. And then I can simplify this one. These two terms are alike. They both have an x and a y. So those can combine to a minus 4xy. So now I still need to multiply that answer by my binomial x minus 2y. So I'm going to show the other way to do that. I'm going to make the box. So I have two terms, x and negative 2y right here, times the three terms, x squared, negative 4xy, and 4y squared. So x squared times x is x cubed, negative 4x squared y, so you just have an x times an x in there. This one's a positive 4y squared times x, negative 2x squared times y, 8xy squared and negative 8, negative 8, let's try that again, y cubed. So my final answer is 1x cubed. Now these are going to be like terms lining up. I have negative 4x squared y and negative 2x squared y, which is negative 6x squared y. And I have, right here, I have 4y squared x and 8xy squared. I flipped the order on one, but it doesn't matter. They both have a y squared and an x. So those combine to 12xy squared. And then you have the minus 8y cubed. So here's our final answer. Oh no. I grabbed the eraser by mistake. Undo that. There we go. There's my final answer. For this one, we 
can't just square. We have to do the squaring first, because that's the order of operations. We do what's inside parentheses first. We can't combine like terms. Then we do the exponent, and then we multiply by the 3. So to do the exponent, I really need to think about this as 7w plus 5z times itself. So that's doing the exponent. Now I could multiply these two together, 7w plus 5z times 7w plus 5z, and then multiply by 3. If I did multiply by 3, I would have to distribute the 3 to only one of these. It wouldn't distribute to both. So you could do it that way too. I'm not going to do that though, because I can do this quicker because I know what multiplying something by itself is. We're going to get 7w times 7w, which is 49w squared. I'm going to get the 5z times 5z, which is the 25z squared. Those are the two terms I would get if I did try to distribute the squared. But I'd be missing the 7w times 5z, which is 35wz, and then another one of those. Another 35wz. So that gives me 70wz. So now I distribute the 3. So I'm going to get 147w squared plus 210wz plus 75z squared minus 7z plus 5zw. So now I'm subtracting. I'm taking this trinomial and I'm subtracting the binomial. So I'm going to change it to plus a negative and distribute that. So it's going to be a negative 7z and a negative 5zw that I'm adding to this first one. So combining some like terms, a negative 7z, that's not anywhere in there. And the minus 5zw is going to combine with this. So I'm really going to have 205wz or zw, whichever order you write that. So those are the combined terms. I'm still going to have my 147w squared. Once I put a plus sign between those. And then I'm going to have my um, z squares and then my negative 7z. So I think I hit all the terms. I got this one, I got this one, I got this one, and I combine the other two. I'm not going to get super worried about the order that you put that in. The last one is just an application problem. Profit is income minus expenses, or income is revenue, expenses are cost. So my profit function is going to be my income function minus my cost function. And notice how I put the cost function in parentheses. I have to subtract the entire cost, not just the 10x. I have to subtract the 10x plus the 100 and subtracting the whole thing. So there's my function. I just need to get it in standard form. So I distribute the x. And then I distribute the minus sign. So I'm subtracting the 10x and subtracting the 100. And this becomes my function in standard form. I put the Highest degree term first, 35x minus 10x is 25x minus 100. So this is a rule that I can put the number of masks in x, and I'll get out the profit for this company. So that's what B is asking. Evaluate P when x is 25. That means find P of 25. So I'm going to take negative 0.6 times 25 squared, 
plus 25 times 25 minus 100. Grab my calculator. I suppose I could use synthetic substitution as well, couldn't I? I'm going to use direct. I still have decimals I'm working with. And in this case, synthetic is going to save you a ton, a ton of time. So I take negative 0.6 times 25 squared plus 25 times 25, which ends up being 25 squared again, minus 100. So you get 150, that's your output. I want you to really pay attention to explain what this means in context. That's what makes this kind of an exceeds type question. So when you put that in, you get 150 out. So when you explain what this means in context, I want you to explain what the input and output represent. So the input is the number of masks the company makes. We're going to put this in a complete sentence. So if the company makes and sells 25 masks, notice both the income and the expenses depended on how many masks there were. The more masks they sell, the more they make, the more they bring in. But the more masks they make, the more their costs go up too. So both of those things depend on how many masks. So if the company makes and sells 25 masks, the output is their profit. Their profit will be $150. And you need to have the units there. We're talking about dollars, the units for the input is number of masks. Any questions?